माई नेम इज़ डॉक्टर दर्शक पटेल टू डेज टॉपिक इज कंड्यूट्स फॉर सी ए बी जी लिटल बिट हिस्ट्री अबाउट द कंड्यूट्स द आइडिया ऑफ आर्टरियल वॉल पैचिंग वॉज फर्स्ट रिपोर्टेड बाई एलेक्सिस करल इन नाइनटीन टेन यूजिंग आर्टरियल विनर्स और इवन पैरिटोनल पैचिस सो फॉर द एनास्ट्रोमोटिक टेक्निक्स एलेक्सिस करल वॉज रिसीव द नोबेल प्राइज इन मेडिसिन इन नाइनटीन ट्वेल्व and this experimental work laid the foundation of our coronary artery revascularization that emerged four decades later using various conduits so it has been just more than 50, 100 years since alexis carrel first described the concept of operating on the coronary circulation over this time cbg has gone through three distinct eras first ex- experimental period second vein graft era and the current era which is mixed venous and arterial grafting So Alexis Gerrel was one of the first surgeons to appreciate the relationship between angina and obstructive coronary artery disease. The left internal thoracic artery (LIA) was used in humans as early as 1945 by Arthur Winberg, but Winberg implanted the LIA directly into the myocardium of the LV. It was called the Winberg procedure. Uh, Robert H Goetz performed the first successful clinical CAVG on May 2, 1960 using a non-suture technique to connect the right internal thoracic artery to the coronary artery. Vasily Kolesov who is believed to have been the first to perform a sutured anastomosis of the internal mammary artery to the left anterior descending coronary artery LAD on 25th February 1964. Michael Debecky did the first Safeno vein coronary aorta coronary bypass with a continuous suture technique on 23rd November 1964. Rene Favaloro was the first to systematically perform CAVG with reproducible results and is considered to be the father of bypass surgery. Now uh, there are uh, three types of conduits arterial conduits venous conduits and uh, synthetic conduits. In arterial conduits there are two types autologous and non autologous in autologous conduits uh, internal thoracic artery uh, or also called internal mammary artery left and right radial artery gastro right gastroepiploic artery inferior epigastric artery left gastric artery gastro duodenal artery splenic artery and intercostal artery in non autologous arterial conduits uh, bovine internal thoracic artery sometimes is used in venous conduits greater saphenous vein short saphenous vein and cephalic or basilic vein are used as autologous venous conduits uh, umbilical vein and great, greater saphenous vein homograft are uh, non autologous venous conduits synthetic conduits there are ptfe dacron and tissue engineered grafts but for the purpose of this lecture we are going to focus on the most commonly used conduits in cavg which are uh, in, internal mammary artery IMA radial artery right gastroepiploic artery inferior epigastric artery and greater saphenous vein now little bit about the history histology of blood vessels which will help us to understand the uh, why all these conduits are different and what different properties they do have okay so there are three coats of tunica ex, uh, in the blood vessels except in capillaries tunica intima tunica media and tunica adventitia tunica intima is lined by the simple squamous epithelium after that there is a basal lamina and subendothelial connective tissue and uh, after that in, there is a internal elastic lamina which separates tunica intima from the tunica media now these internal elastic lamina contains fenestrations in varying amounts these fenestrations allows passage in for perfusion and migration of smooth muscle cells this passage is important because Uh, if the fenestrations are more the migration of smooth muscles into the from the media to the intima is going to be more which is going to cause intimal hyperplasia okay uh, uh, second layer is tunica media it is a dense connective tissue layer thicker it is thicker in arteries than in veins uh, it is made up of smooth muscle and, and smooth muscles are more in arteries than in veins Uh, uh outer outer side of this is the external elastic lamina which is thinner and with few fenestrations uh, most outer layer is called tunica adventitia it is the connective tissue continues and fuses with the stroma of the organ system it may contains vasa vasorum these vasa vasorum are important to supply the wall of the vessel 
अगर ट्यूनिका एंटीमा एंड एडवेंटिशिया आर लॉन्जिट्यूडिनली अरेंज वेर एज द मीडिया इज सर्क्यूलर द एंडोथेलियम इज लाइन बाय स्कैमस सेल्स एंड सिक्रीट्स केमिकल मीडिएटर्स फॉर डायबिटीज ब्लड कोवेगुलेशन एंड वस्कुलर टोन दिज मीडिएटर्स विल बी इम्पॉर्टेंट इन द फंक्शन ऑफ द कंट्यूट्स विच वी सी लेटर ऑन नॉरिशमेंट ऑफ द ब्लड वेजल्स ना द स्मॉल एंड मीडियम साइज ब्लड वेजल्स हैव द न्यूट्रियट एंड गैशियस एक्सचेंज बाई डायरेक्ट डिफ्यूजन फ्रॉम द ल्यूमेन ए वॉल थिकनेस ऑफ अप टू थ्री फिफ्टी माइक्रॉन कैन बी इजिली परफ्यूज थ्रू द डिफ्यूजन फ्रॉम द इन साइड ऑफ द ल्यूमेन इन लार्जर वेजल विच इज मोर देन थ्री फिफ्टी माइक्रॉन्स द इनर पार्ट अप टू द मिडल ऑफ टूनिका मीडिया इज बाय सिंपल डिफ्यूजन बट द आउटर लेयर्स आर बाय स्पेशलाइज आर्टरोज और मेन्यूज कॉल्ड वाजा वाजोरम ना द इंटरनल थोरेसिक आर्टरी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इंटरनल मेमोरी आर्टरी आई टी ए और आई एम ए लेफ्ट एंड राइट ना द इंटरनल थोरेसिक आर्टरी ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम द इन्फ्रीय एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सप्लेवन आर्टरी ऑपोजिट द थायरो सर्वाइकल ट्रंक अबाउट टू टू थ्री सेंटीमीटर अबाउ द स्ट्रोनो क्लोविकुलर जॉइंट आफ्टर राइजिंग फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द सप्लेवन आर्टरी Uh, above the first coastal coastal cartilage it runs downwards forwards and medially behind the sternoclavicular joint it is uh, here it is related posterior to subclavian vein uh, and here uh, posterior to is is subclavian vein and phrenic nerve below the first coastal cartilage it runs uh, along the lateral edge of the sternum uh, up to the sixth intercostal space where it divides uh, into two branches superior epigastric and musculophrenic arteries here is the figure to show Uh, origin of the left internal memory artery now the relationships anteriorly uh, to the internal memory artery up, upper six coastal cartilages and the internal intercostal muscles of the spaces are there posteriorly sternal costalis muscle is there uh, major branches of the left inter- uh, of the memory internal memory artery pericardio phrenic artery which is arises at the root of the neck and ac- accompanies the phrenic nerve it supplies the pericardium and pleura uh, mediastinal branches these are irregular branches sup- which supply the thymus and mediastinal soft tissue these are usually two or three in number uh, two anterior intercostal arteries per space in upper six intercostal spaces uh, perforating branches to the anterior chest wall which are present medially when harvesting the internal memory artery in females uh, two three or four perforators supply the breast tissue uh, uh, internal memory artery is two branches superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery superior epigastric artery enters the rectus at the at the seventh cartilage musculophrenic artery runs down and laterally behind the coastal cartilages and gives entry into coastal arteries to those spaces now uh, histology of the internal thoracic artery Uh, internal thoracic artery or internal memory artery is lined with a typical arterial endothelium uh, internal elastic lamina has fewer and smaller fenestrations uh, uh, this is because of that the internal memory artery it, uh, the intramural hyperplasia doesn't happen the media contains fewer smooth muscle cells uh, and 5 to 9 elastic lamella so it is a more uh, elastic artery than the more muscular artery the proximal and distal and 10 to 20% contains fewer elastic lamina lamella and usually none are distal to the bifurcation the adventitia contains dense collagen fibers and loose alveolar tissue that contains adequate vasa vasorum this is important uh, wall thickness is about 200 micron which is well under the 350 micron that can be nourished by diffusion from the lumen so even if we de- uh, skeletonize the left Im- internal memory artery uh, uh, its blood supply remains intact now features of internal memory artery is suitable as coronary conduit why it is the it is considered as gold standard coronary conduit okay so the internal elastic lamella has fewer and smaller fenestrations okay because of that the smooth muscle migration does not happen so the inter- uh, chances of intramural hyperplasia are very less the muscular media has numeral elastic lamella and uh, fewer smooth muscle cells because of that the chances of spasm are relatively low as compared to the other arteries like radial artery and the uh, intact endothelium provides edrf endothelium derived relaxing factor nitric oxide and prostacycline which cause the vasodilatation now uh, as it is the arterial conduit it is used to the arterial pressure so less intramural hyperplasia occurs in the internal memory artery 
it is a live graft with vasa vasorum so it is longevity is uh, is more than the venous grafts the it has the adaptability to increase the blood flow demand according to flow demand the blood flow increases or decreases in the internal mammary artery uh, internal mammary artery is usually a pedicle graft so no proximal anastomosis is required and the anatomical location of the internal mammary artery is particularly suitable for coronary grafting especially the left internal mammary artery to the left interior coronary descending artery uh, is considered a good standard anastomosis a suitable diameter its diameter is 3.5 mm which matches with the coronary's diameter okay and uh, even after we harvest the left internal mammary artery the chest wall has collateral blood supply so no major complication happens if we uh, harvest the left internal mammary artery however which is not true when we harvest bilateral internal mammary arteries especially they are harvested in a pedicle manner at that time the chances of uh, devascularization of sternum and chances of deep sternal wound and infection are there which you will see later on now harvesting of the internal thoracic artery uh, mostly internal uh, internal mammary artery is harvested from intrathoracic manner with, with, with the use of the specialized retractor with they are either sternal based or or the table based okay so there are three types of harvesting one is called the pedicle lima where we harvest the left internal mammary artery two accompanying veins and the surrounding tissue and some amount of muscle second is called the skeletonized uh, left internal mammary artery where only left internal mammary artery is harvested every other thing is left behind on the sternum itself and the third is ischemic skeletonized uh, internal mammary artery where only the left internal mammary artery and accompanying two veins are harvested a linear graft so which skeletonization there are few advantages like the diameter of the mammary artery increases the length of the mammary artery also increases but we, uh, for skeletonization there is uh, there is one disadvantage that it takes some time and skill to harvest the skeletonize the internal mammary artery and the chances of injury are more as compared to the pedicle limb harvest so which we have to weigh in when we are harvesting the skeletonize or pedicle limb I mean internal mammary harvesting semi skeletonized uh, internal mammary artery harvesting is midway and reasonably good way for of harvesting the internal mammary artery which doesn't devascularize the sternum also uh, now methods to pre- overcome spasm although the left internal mammary artery has fewer uh, smooth muscle cells and more elastic fibers still it has tendency to go undergo spasm especially if it is handled in a wrong way to to prevent the spasm the handling should be minimum uh, the uh, we should not hold the intima and there are some pharmacologic agents which are used for the relieving of the spasm like papaverin uh, now papaverin is either used in uh, admix with blood or in the saline uh, when we are using extra luminal papaverin which is 1 to 2 mg per ml uh, and intra luminal papaverin which is 0.5 mg per ml which is injected into the mammary artery to dilate it however uh, we should avoid hydrostatic dilatation of the mammary artery because of the chances of the injury uh, the papaverin does causes when we give intraluminally because it is acidic it does cause chemical damage so unless it is absolutely necessary we should not use intraluminal papaverin as well but extra luminal papaverin is commonly used in the practice now the grafting strategy uh lima is based uh, uh, grafted on the left anterior descending coronary artery here the chances of patency are much more at the end of 10 years other configurations are lima anastomosis to the left circumflex coronary artery in those cases lima can be uh, wrapped right internal mammary artery can be anastomosis to the left anterior descending artery now lima also has the same properties as the uh, lima it also has the same histologic properties as the left internal mammary artery and the patency rates are also uh, similar to the left internal mammary artery especially when it is anastomosed to the anterior descending artery now if the lima is damaged it can be used as a free graft uh, the flow of the lima should be good when we anastomose it it should be 150 ml per minute uh, if we are anastomosing uh, lima as a free graft 
on the disease aort uh, we should use the SVG hood or pericardial patch because of the diameter discrepancy. We will see the other configurations of left internal memory artery and right internal memory artery. Now when we harvest the edema there are some conditions like uh, history of uh, radiation for the uh, for the malignancy, history of a previous chest surgery. These conditions cause a difficulty of dissection of the left internal memory artery. Previous thoracic surgery also causes the difficulty of dissection of the left internal memory artery because in those cases the memory artery is adherent to the chest wall and it is difficult to harvest and sometimes the injury occurs when harvesting. Now, fragility of the ITA in very old age patients and especially in female, the left internal memory artery sometimes is very fragile and prone to trauma and dissection. Now, we have to understand the limitations of flow through the arterial conduit. Whenever we, uh, whenever we have a patient of uh, uh, cardiogenic shock or acute MI or in the emergency situations, the arterial conduit do not revascularize the heart immediately. Uh, at, that, at, at that time venous conduits are used because we want immediate revascularization of the heart and also when we, uh, anest uh, we use arterial conduits in those patients in the post-operative period if the pressures are dropped the arterial flow decreases drastically whereas the venous flow still remains somewhat. Now questions regarding the use of the internal memory artery, as we mentioned diabetics, immunocompromised and CRF patients, these patients when we harvest the internal memory artery, the chances of sternal de uh, devascularization and chances of deep sternal bundle infection is there, especially when we harvest the bilateral internal memory artery. Uh, now to prevent this, if the bilateral internal memory artery are harvested in, in this patient, they should be harvested in a, a skeletonized fashion to prevent the devascularization of the sternum. In extremely old patients or in patients who have life expectancy less than 10 years, uh, Lima is not going to benefit that much because the life expectancy is less than 10. And in those conditions, venous graft is also reasonable. In atherosclerotic subclavian arteries, uh, when we have in the preoperative Doppler the uh, flu reversal in the vertebral artery, or on the angiography we have demonstrated that the proximal subclavian stenosis is there where lima flow might not be adequate. Uh, uh, patients requiring emergency surgery for cardiogenic shock, their harvesting of lima will take some time. So in those cases also the venous grafts are considered. But it is not a rule that you have to graft uh, venous grafts in those conditions. Now severely calcified or extremely tiny target uh, coronary artery these are the patients who are not going to much benefit from the arterial conduits. And patients who have received the heavy dose of radiation to the chest where the chest for radiation are more likely and the harvesting of lima will be more difficult and prone to injury. Now one of the major problems with IMA grafts is chances of spasm in perioperative period which can result in acute infarction which we have to keep in mind. Now the grafting strategy now the left internal memory artery and right internal memory artery can be used in a quite a different configurations. Suppose we are using a, only a single artery then left internal memory artery to LAD which is the most common and well accepted gold standard anastomosis. Other thing is left internal memory artery can be used on the circumflex means or obtuse marginal branches. And the right internal memory artery we are using can be used on the distal RCA and right internal memory artery can be used on the uh, left internal descending coronary artery also. If you are using a bilateral coronary artery, then there are two configurations. One is the uh, right internal memory artery to LAD and lima to uh, circumflex marginal branches. Other is the lima is anastomosis to LAD as usual and lima is uh, through the transfer sinus is anastomosis to the obtuse marginal branches. Now there are composite Y graft with free lima to lima, with lima to LED and lima to um, circumflex marginal branches as well as to the posterior descending artery. When uh, now the patency, lima to LED graft has 92 to 97 percent patency at the end of one year, 88 to 96 percent at end of five years, and 88 to 93 percent at 10 years. 
the rima to led patency is also similar but on other grafts it is slightly less than the lima by 5 to 10 percent the failure rate of internal thoracic artery grafts is 0.5 to 1 percent per year between years 1 and 10 beyond the 10th year only anecdotal data are available right now the patency rate of uh, y grafts is uh, patency rate of y grafts is more than the sequential grafts now factors influencing conduit patency so when the lima failure occurs there are three or four reasons for that one is the intimal fracturing and thrombosis which usually happens at the time of harvesting which causes a localized or generalized dissection a second is a profound spasm with secondary thrombosis because of the spasm the secondary thrombosis occurs and lima gets occluded third is faulty anastomotic technique cause narrowing at the anastomosis and the resulting thrombosis of the lima third is the in very severe coronary artery disease we have used lima at the time the because of the poor runoff the, ch the chances of lima thrombosis are there and the other thing is in competitive coronary flow causing thrombosis when the proximal coronary artery lesion is not critical uh, or not severe enough for the arterial flow at that time competitive coronary flow occur and the lima might get thrombosis because it has adductive flow this is the problem with all the arterial grafts whenever there is a proximal coronary artery stenosis uh, less than 70 percent chances of competitive coronary flow is there and especially on the right side whenever we put our arterial graft on the right side the region has to be more than 90 percent at least and for the left coronary system it has to be more than 70 percent now the second uh, uh, most common arterial conduit used is, is the radial artery. First is the left internal memory artery and right internal memory artery. Third is the radial artery. Now radial artery uh, was first used by uh, Alain Car Carpentier in the 1971. However, within two years after its uh, initial usage, there were reports of early failure and significant intimal hyperplasia, which resulted in almost complete abandonment of its use as a graft for many years. Now, uh, the reason where the techniques of early radial artery is keratinization combined with the use of mechanical dilatation resulted in vessel trauma and spasm and subsequent early graft failure. Uh, after that, in 1992, Christopher Eka renewed the radial artery grafting. He used a more refined no-touch method of harvesting and used a pharmacological vasodilatation instead of mechanical vasodilatation. Now this better understanding of graft physiology and production of the endothelium led to 100% radial artery patency on early postoperative angiography which is still the discharge. A number of uh, randomized control trials that have compared the radial artery to SVG and free right internal thoracic artery as the graft for non-LED targets showed that the radial artery to have superior patency on fire angiographic follow up. In the origin and course, the radial and ulnar arteries originate as a bifurcation of the uh, uh, brachial artery in the cubital fossa. It runs, a uh, radial artery runs along the lateral aspect of the forearm between the brachioradialis and flexor carpi radialis muscles. Proximal to the wrist, it splits into superficial and deep palmar branches, forming an anastomosis with the distal branches of the ulnar artery. In the hand which is called palmar arches which is important when we harvest the radial artery to maintain the perfusion of the hand now histology of the radial artery uh, radial artery is a medium sized muscular artery with relatively more fenestrations in the elastic lamina. because of that the chances of intimal hyperplasia are more as compared to the internal memory artery tunica media has more smooth muscle cells than elastic fibers because of this the chances of spasm are more in radial artery. The tunica adventitia has more fi fatty fibrous tissue and less concentration of pasta vasorum. This is important because uh, when we harvest radial artery, it is usually used as a pedicle graft with accompanying vein and fat to maintain its muscularity. Features of radial artery suitable as coronary conduit, why it is commonly used because it has an adequate length to reach any coronary vessel it can we can use in a y fashion and uh, 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 graft the uh, obtuse marginals and as well as the posterior descending artery co posterior descending coronary artery 
the radial artery diameter 2 to 3 mm without the size mismatch to the coronary arteries is suitable for coronary anastomosis. It has a radial artery has somewhat robust structure than the left and mammary artery and relative resistance to kinking. It has higher patency rates compared to the saphenous vein grafts but lower than the uh, left internal mammary artery and right internal mammary artery. Now the superficial anatomical location uh, makes it easy to harvest and the manipulation uh, is also easy when harvesting it. Radial artery can be harvested with the IM uh, internal mammary artery and saphenous vein at the same time. Uh, uh, harvesting of the radial artery is less risky for surrounding infection and mediastinitis. It is an uh, obvious advantage. This is the main deciding factor when we want to use a second arterial conduit either as a radial artery or the right internal memory artery. When the patient is diabetic, old age, obesity and who has a high chance of wound infection, the radial artery is preferred. When the chances of wound infection are less, uh, the right internal memory artery is usually preferred. The tendency for vasoplasm is uh, its most important negative characteristic. The elastic lamella have multiple penetration. This is the reason why the radial artery presents a vulnerability to atherosclerosis and intimal hyperplasia. Diabetes, mellitus, and renal dysfunction aggravate vascular wall morbidity, leading to intimal hyperplasia and radial artery grafts. It produces less nitric oxide than the internal thoracic artery. Now, internal thoracic artery produces nitric oxide, which causes dilatation of the internal thoracic artery. Also, that nitric oxide goes into the distal coronary arteries and causes coronary vasodilatation. Here, this advantage is not so much with the radial artery. Uh, radial artery also has intense reactivity to endothelin 1, angiotensin 2, norepinephrine, and serotonin released after any endothelial damage or platelet aggregation. This possibly also experiences its spastic nature. Uh, flow competition phenomenon with mildly stenotic native coronary arteries is common in radial artery graft, string sign. So whenever we uh, graft the radial artery, it is important that the left coronary system has at least 70% stenosis and the right coronary artery has at least more than 90% stenosis. Now, radial artery harvesting technique, there are two techniques, open and endoscopic. Open technique is mostly used. Uh, now, you can harvest it as particle or scatternized craft. Conventional harvesting is with accompanying veins and fat, with minimal handling and limited use of electrocautery, avoiding probing of or hydrostatic dilatation to end, avoid the intimal damage. Now, modified harvesting technique using ultrasonic scalpel, harmonic scalpel are also there which can cut and coagulate causing minimal thermal injury of the graft. Endoscopic harvesting technique, the 7mm scope is used to harvest and uh, the bipolar scissors are used to harvest the radial artery. Now, uh, uh, scatternization of the radial artery is superior to the pedicle technique in terms of patency rates, but there are also disadvantages such as irreversible injury to the radial artery or spasms. That's why mostly the radial artery is used as a pedicle graft. Now, management of radial artery conduits spasm. Uh, the goal standard to prevent radial artery spasm is systemic administration of tiltiazam, calcium insulin blocker, in combination with topical papaverin. The intraluminal injection of warm arterial blood and papaverin is also favored. Here, the blood is preferred than the serum, preferred than the saline, uh, because we can avoid the acidic environment inside. Now, the other topical radial artery antispasmodics in clinical use are calcium channel blockers, verapamil, with nitroglycerin, which is called VG solution, and phenoxybenzamine. Avoidance of when we are doing the on pump. Uh, on pump uh, uh, arrested heart CABG avoidance of course line or eye slush in the pericardium is also significant to prevent the spasm which we have to keep in mind. Preoperative exclusion criteria for radial artery harvesting. Now for all patients we, if we want to harvest the radial artery we have to first do the Allen test preoperatively to evaluate the sufficient ulnar collateral circulation to the hand. Uh, modified uh, modification to, to the iron test, a uh, barbu test using a pulse oximeter, uh, usually based on the first or second finger, contributes to assure an intact palmarage observing the pulse and saturation. Uh, this is the method we commonly use uh, before harvesting the radial artery. You can use the preoperative Doppler study 
also for evaluation of the ulnar collateral circulation to the end and also for the radial artery assessment also. If the radial artery uh, allen test is positive, then the, uh, then the radial artery is not used, then the other artery graphs like the right internal memory artery are used. Of the patency in comparison, radial artery conduits appear to be superior to saphenous wing grafts in terms of early and late mortality and morbidity and also in long-term survival and freedom from cardiac events. So, uh, graft patency in short term is 96 to 100%, mid term is 94 to 97% and long term is 84 to 96%, which is slightly less than the right internal memory artery, but it is always more than the uh, saphenous vein. Complications of the radial artery harvesting, most common are bleeding, hematomas and wound infection. Sensory nerve injury is causing um, sensory abnormality and numbness in 3 to 10 percent of patients occur. Motor impairments are usually early finding. Less common is the hand ischemia. But uh, uh, after radial artery harvesting, when we apply the creep bandage, sometimes the, the hand does remain cold in the ICU. So we have to remove in those conditions the creep bandage or elastic bandage on the hand to uh, for adequate perfusion of the hand which usually uh, clears it. Now the other artery graft is right gastroepiploic artery, uh, which is uh, right gastroepiploic artery is a, the, is a branch of gastrodurinal artery, which is in the branch of the celiac trunk. Now the histology of gast right gastroepiploic artery is similar to radial artery. It has more muscular tissue, so more chances of spasm. Uh, it has uh, less fenestration in the internal elastic lamina, so less chance of intrimal hyperplasia and subsequent atherosclerosis. So to harvest the right gastroepiploic artery, the usual midline shenotomy incision is extended downward and the laparotomy is done. The uh, right uh, the right gastroepiploic artery uh, runs uh, below the proximal portion of the duodenum at the above the head of the pancreas and along the greater curvature of the stomach. So we can harvest the right gastroepiploic artery. It can be used as a pedicle graft. Uh, we can make a cruciate incision in the diaphragm and uh, and uh, and make a hole in the diaphragm and pass the right gastroepiploic artery uh, in the mediastinum and we can anastomose is, is as on the in, uh, inferior surface like on the PDA or PLV which is the common site for the anastomosis of the pedicle graft. Now parallel Taylor with 51 right gastroepiploic in C2 grafts with a patency rate of 90% in 31 patients prior to hospital discharge and at one year 80%, 80% patency at one year he demonstrated. Mills et al. showed 82% patency at 11 months. Summa et al. Uh, showed 10 year patency of 87%. So, uh, in D2 surgery, when no other option is available, the uh, RIMA, le left internal memory artery, RIMA, or venous grafts are used, this is the artery which is available to keep that in mind and it may use as an alternative. Although the, uh, in our practice, the right gastrofibrillary artery is not commonly used. Another infrequent uh, uh, used uh, condu arterial conduit is inferior epigastric artery. So in the inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the femoral artery. It passes superomedially from inguinal canal towards the midline. In 1988, Puget reported the use of uh, uh, inferior epigastric artery as a bypass conduit. Uh, the poros are its superficial co course makes harvest easy. Uh, it is a near perfect match with the branches of the RCA and LCX, the diameter wise. Uh, it has the resistance to arteriosclerosis. Its internal elastic lamina has minimal fenestration, that's why. The disadvantages are proximal anastomosis is difficult because of the wall thickness mismatch. So, it is mainly used as a composite graft, uh, like in a Y fashion, with other arterial grafts. The most frequent complication is an abdominal or retroperitoneal hematoma. Although rare uh, cases of skin and ductus muscular necrosis are reported, its use is favored on unavailability or unsuitability of other conduits or when we want to preserve the one IMA for the future. It is main, also mainly a so these are the arterial conduits. Now the most common venous conduit we use is the greater saphenous vein which is very widely used. It has more versatility 
and we can generally the diameter is adequate enough and the length is also adequate enough so we can uh, graft almost any corollary targets so the greater stiffness vein uh, it is formed by the dorsal venous arch of the foot and the dorsal vein of the great toe after that uh, forming it assigns up the medial side of the leg passing anterior to the medial malleolus and uh, at the knee posterior to the medial condyle it receives tributaries from other small superficial veins the greater saphenous vein uh, terminates by tending into the femoral vein uh, immediately inferior to the inguinal ligament now the histology of the uh, great saphenous vein the wall of the saphenous vein contains a thin intima separated from the media by a rudimentary internal membrane uh, the media consists of two distinct layers of uh, muscle cells outer circular with abundant collagen fibers and inner longitudinal with few elastic fibers the prominent tunic adventitia with poor vasa vasorum the elastic lamina is very poor and interrupted so here the because of the elastic lamina are uh, are very poor and have more fenestrations the chances of smooth muscle migration are more so the intimer hyperplasia and resulting atherosclerosis chances are more in venous grafts also the vein has a very poor fasa uh, vasorum supply so if you are waged a vein in the skeletonized fashion without accompanying fat chances of uh, it becoming rigid over the period of time it is more so that's why the no touch technique with uh, surrounding fat tissue the concept of harvesting vein with surrounding tissue came to maintain its patency for a long time as a conduit uh, great saphenous greater saphenous vein has some advantages it is superficial and easy to harvest uh, it is less time consuming to harvest it uh, the size is suitable for the coronary anastomosis Uh, uh greater saphenous vein has adequate length which can be uh, uh, anastomosed to any coronary targets uh, after harvesting there is less scarring quick healing and less complication uh, relatively these advantages are development of vein graft disease which we see later on uh, towards the later part of the lecture uh, it has a low potential to secrete intrinsic nitric oxide and prostacycline unlike arterial conduits our internal memory artery uh it is, the flow is not adapted to high atrial uh, uh, the way, the structure of the vein is not adapted to high atrial pressures which causes intimer hyperplasia it has poor interluminal perfusion because of its high thickness and thus cadernized graft can be considered as a dead graft because there is no vasa vasorum in the vein graft uh, the disease vein causes a problem like a varicosity is when we harvest the vein so this vein should not be used routinely contraindications are varicosity is deep venous thrombosis peripheral vascular disease skin disease diabetic ulcers recent leg traumatic diseases are related contraindications last three but varicosity and dvt are absolute contraindication we should not harvest the venous graft in those patients diagnosis test uh, we can do preoperative doppler venography and mapping or usually by inspection preoperatively uh, we can have the idea about the conduit now the harvesting techniques there are three techniques one is the continuous incision which is most commonly used second is the interrupted bridging skin incisions and the third is the endoscopic vein harvesting uh, now uh, because of the vein has poor vasa vasorum uh, and the uh, intraluminal supply is very less we should harvest the vein with a uh, adequate fat pad uh, we should maintain a proper luminal uniformity and uh, we should avoid heterocytic dilatation uh, uh, because of the there is a damage from the pressure if at all we have to do heterocytic dilatation blood is preferred in, instead of the saline excessive pressure may cause intimal injury just like that we have seen uh, the vein graft should be divided only when it is uh, it is required to be used before that it should be kept in the leg in situ only now the last portion is the saphenous vein graft disease after all these conduits the arterial conduits are resistant to the intimer hyperplasia but the so they have a higher patency rate at the end of 10 years but the venous grafts have a chances of intimal hyperplasia so it causes the saphenous vein graft disease saphenous vein graft disease is composed of three discrete processes one is the thrombosis second is the intimer hyperplasia third is the atherosclerosis 
now thrombosis it is it happens uh, it occurs in 3% to 12% within one month within one month 3% to 12% venous grafts are occluded combination of alterations in the vessel wall blood coagulability and fluid dynamics these are the reasons for because of for the thrombosis the harvesting of venous conduits is associated with focal endothelial disruption uh, because of that loss of the endothelial monolayer results in the accumulation of fibrin on the surface the adherence of the platelets and neutrophils. It also activates the extrinsic coagulation cascade by tissue factor that is expressed in the exposed subendothelium. Uh, inherent anti and inherent antithrombotic properties of veins are comparatively weak because of that the thrombosis occurs, which is usually seen in the first month of the CABG. Second is the intimal hyperplasia. Intimal hyperplasia defined as the accumulation of smooth muscle cells and extracellular matrix in the intimal compartment. It is the major disease process between one month and one year, which may reduce the lumen by 25% and above. Initially, so initially, medial in the tunica media, smooth muscle cells proliferate in response to growth factors and cytokines from platelets, endothelial cells, and macrophages. It is followed by migration of smooth muscle cells into the intima because it has a poor, uh, poor internal elastic lamina. After that, later synthesis and deposition of extracellular matrix leads to a progressive increase in intimal fibrosis. Explained by transient ischemia to the veins during expansion and reperfusion after grafting. A loss of the vasa azorum blood supply on which veins are relatively more dependent uh, than arteries may also promote a continuing cycle of ischemia and fibrosis. Uh, so because of that, we should harvest the vein with surrounding fat tissue and uh, it should be uh, expanded only when it is ready to be grafted. So we can minimize the ischemia period. Uh, third phase is the atherosclerosis, which is the dominant process beyond the first year after a bypass surgery. So angiographic studies indicate that among patients who had unstable angina, the culprit lesion is in 70 to 85 percent of cases is an atherosclerotic vein graft stenosis with thrombosis. So chronic endothelial cell injury and dysfunction lead to rapidly progressive nature of the atherosclerosis. Vein graft atheroma has more form cells and inflammatory cells, including multinucleate giant cells, suggestive of immune-mediated atherosclerosis. Morphologically, vein graft atherosclerosis tends to be diffuse, concentric, and friable with a poorly developed or absent fibrous cap and little evidence of calcification, promoting plaque rupture and thrombosis. So, to decrease the chances of atherosclerosis, the uh, cholesterol reducing drug like atrovacetine are routinely used. Uh, only the beta blockers and uh, HMG go reductors inhibitors have shown the decrease in the chances of intermediate hyperplasia. Uh, uh, risk factors for vein graft disease to, uh, patients who continue smoke or have uncontrolled hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and female gender these are the risk factors for vein, uh, development of the vein graft disease. Thank you.